Hey, it's Jared. I built a custom widget for my iPhone that displays quotes from books that I've read that I logged in Notion. And I wanted to talk about how I built that and give you access to everything that I created so that you can do the same thing on your phone. Hey, real quick, I looked at my YouTube analytics and it shows that 86% of you that are watching this video are not subscribed to the channel. So real quickly, if you could hit that subscribe button, it helps support the channel. It helps the YouTube algorithm suggest my content to more people. Thank Thanks so much. Let's get back to it. I had a process for this that didn't involve a bunch of jumping around. It was using Readwise, which is an application that connects to my Kindle and syncs all of my highlights. And then I can export all of those to Notion and have all of them in Notion. But one better, Readwise has its own app, which has a beautiful widget that is really nice. And it would display random quotes from books on my iPhone. And I really like that because when I go and read a book and I highlight something, whether it be on a Kindle or in an actual paper book, a lot of times I just don't remember those things. I highlight it and I never go back and see them. I need those highlights to come about in my day so that I can see them and remember those quotes and remember what was important to them so that I can implement those things into my life. Now, I recently switched back to reading paper books more often. I just, I wasn't feeling connected to the content that I was reading in my Kindle, and I wanted to move back to actual books, which means highlighting with a highlighter. And that means that Readwise isn't gonna work for me because I need to take those actual quotes and put them into something. And so I quickly started restructuring all of those highlights from my Kindle that I had saved in Notion into a database. And I was trying to figure out how do I see those things on my iPhone? Well, as you can see on my iPhone, I have a widget here that shows a quote. It shows the author, the book, and then also some tags that I applied to that particular entry as well. Notion doesn't have a widget like this. Notion does not have a widget that displays information from a specific note in this way. And so I had to create something on my own. That led me to searching the internet to try and find something. And I did find a script that somebody made available. And that script can actually be ran within an app on the iPhone called Scriptable. And so I got this idea originally from someone who had done this before, but I made a lot of changes and customized it to work the way that I wanted it to work. So here's what I did. First of all, I created a database and added all those quotes to that database. I structured them in a way that made the most sense for me for organizing them. And then also if I ever wanted to export all of those into a spreadsheet or something so I can import them into something else, I wanted that data to be usable in the future. And you have to be careful when you put data into Notion, that you put it in there in a way that you can get that data out and make it useful later on. And so my database is set up just that way. So I could take all of this information out export it as a CSV and use it later on down the road should I want to. Because chances are there will probably be something better in the future. I want my data to be easily accessible. The second thing I did was take that script that I found online and start looking at it and trying to identify how it was working. What that script was doing was connecting to my Notion database and it would pull out a random quote. Pretty cool, right? It would pull out a random quote and display that. Another neat thing that it did was allow you to rate that quote. So one to five stars and based on that rating, it would display that quote more often. So say you have five quotes in your database and two of them are ranked five, two of them are ranked three, and one of them are ranked one. You're gonna see those higher rated quotes more often than the ones that are rated threes and definitely more often than the one that is rated with a one. And that's pretty cool because not all quotes are created equal and I might wanna see some more often than others. But the original script was displaying information in the widget that I didn't find useful, such as that star rating. I don't necessarily need this star rating to be displayed. I would rather have the quote the author, the book, and then maybe some tags that help me remember how I categorized that. Those are the things that were important to me. Now it's been many, many years since I have written much code. And so I noodled around with that code a little bit, kept breaking it, made some changes, had a little bit of success, ultimately ended up breaking it and kind of removing some of the things that I had put in there to simplify things. And I did have it working. But then I decided, you know what? Chat GPT is a beautiful thing. I'm gonna use AI to make this work. Now I did not use Chat GPT itself. I ended up using Claude AI, which I found to be just absolutely fun. Claude AI, I like the way it communicates. I like the way that it produces its information much better than Chat GPT. So I put that code into Claude AI and I asked it to analyze the code and tell me what the code did. It told me just that. It said, hey, this code connects to Notion. 
it looks like it's pulling a random quote and displaying that in a widget that will then run within an application called Scriptable on your phone. I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what it does. How cool is it that it could tell all that stuff from the code? I started to feel like younger me who had more of a handle on writing code was sitting next to me or maybe even better yet, a good friend that was a developer who really knew his stuff was sitting next to me. So I then asked it, hey, can we change this? Can we change that? I wanna have the quote in the title line. I don't wanna have that as a text property. I want it to be in the title property. So made those changes. I also wanted to add tags and I wanted the tags to be displayed. So I asked it to add that and it did it. Now there were a couple of instances where it did things wrong. It chose a JavaScript version that was not compatible with the scriptable app. And so I had to work through that a little bit. And I really did have to have an understanding of what the code was trying to do so that I could troubleshoot. Because even though the scriptable app will show you errors, those errors don't necessarily tell you exactly what you need to do to fix the problem. So I had a lot of chat back and forth with Claude AI on what was going wrong, sometimes even asking it questions like, do you think it could be this? Because even the AI couldn't see every angle and figure out everything on its own the first time around. Sometimes I had to ask it questions. Do you think that you're using the wrong property type for this? It should be a select property type. And then it would say, oh, hey, you're right. Good observation. I chose the wrong property type. And then it would fix it and then the code would work. Great. Other changes that I made were to the display of the text. I wanted the author name to be bold. I wanted the book title to be italicized and I wanted the tags to be down below that as well. And so changing that within Claude AI was actually a really fun process for me. It was fun chatting with the AI, asking it questions, trying to figure out how to make this code work, taking the code that it gave me, putting it into the scriptable app, and then seeing if it would work. Now, I definitely went a little too far down that rabbit hole of really trying to customize things. And I got to the point where the script was loading pretty slowly. So I realized I needed to pull out some of these things that I thought would be features that were useful for me to keep the script loading quickly and not causing any issues on my phone. At the end of all of that, I had a widget that loads a new quote every five minutes. And so if I'm looking at my phone, I read this quote, all the people are situations that make me upset, are angry and angry or just like the empty boat. It's a quote from a book. To know what the empty boat means, you'd have to read the book. But then after about five minutes, when I go back to my phone again, there should be a new quote displayed on the screen. Very cool. And from that point forward, I don't have to think about the widget at all. All I have to do is add new quotes into my Notion database. And the script that's running within this app is going to connect to my Notion database and pull a new quote and display it to me on my phone. It was very easy for me to also add the same widget to my iPad, but unfortunately Scriptable does not have an application that runs on the Mac. So at the moment, I'm not able to add the same widget to my Mac. So I've made everything that I did available to you, including instructions on how to do it. There's a link in the description below that takes you to my blog. I've got the template for the Notion database. I've got the script that you can copy and paste with instructions on what you need from your own Notion account and what you need to change within the code. It's very easy easy and you should be able to have this up and running within about 30 minutes or so. I'm definitely going to be looking at how I can create widgets for different types of content that's in my Notion databases and display that on my phone. This has definitely been a fun project. It's been very enjoyable to make it happen and it's a very useful tool in my life so that I can recall information from the books that I'm reading. So if you found this useful, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you back in another one soon. Take care.